The Darbo definition of integrability states that a function f is integrable on a, b if the supremum of the lower sums for all partitions p is equal to the infimum of the upper sums of all partitions p on a, b. And now the supremum of all the lower sums just means the largest possible value of the lower sum in the set of lower sums. And the infimum of the upper sums just means the smallest possible value uh, in the set of all the upper sums, so the smallest possible value. And if you recall the formula for these, well the formula for the lower sum is going to be uh, the summation from the summation from uh, little mi times xi minus xi minus 1. And the upper sum formula is going to be the same thing but with big MI. And XI and XI minus 1 define a partition which is like a sub interval of uh, A and B and uh, little MI is just the smallest possible value of F of X between that sub interval of XI minus 1 and XI and uh, capital MI is just the biggest possible value. So that means in our proofs what we will be doing is we will be taking the smallest of the biggest possible values in each interval and taking the biggest of the smallest possible values in each integral and we will be comparing them to see if they're equal to each other. And we use it to prove that things are not integrable. Like in this example for example, f of x equaling to 0 if x is rational and 1 if it is irrational. And we are asked to prove that it's not integrable on 0 to 3. So in order for it to uh, be not integrable on 0 to 3, well, we have to prove that the following thing is false, right? So, so the supremum of all the lower sums uh, for the partitions of uh, 0 to 3 is not equal to the infimum of the upper sums for the uh, same partitions. So to start off our proof, what we'll have to do is we have to uh, pick a partition and we'll write it in this notation. All that means is that we're splitting up the uh, the interval into XO's, X1, all the way up to XN. And we want to make sure that this uh, partition is arbitrary. It's very important that you write this part. Um, and it's an arbitrary partition from 0 to 3. All that means is that we're splitting up the interval into these uh, partitions here. So then to continue on with the proof, what we're going to do is we're going to compute the lower and upper sums. So if you remember, the formula for the lower sum is just going to be uh, the summation uh, from i equals 1 to n, uh, small mi times xi minus xi minus 1. So now we have to find out what mi is. So to find mi, that's just going to be the, the smallest possible value of that f of x, x can take on. Uh, between the interval that we are wanting to dealing with. So it's xi minus 1 to xi. So if you notice, there's only two possible values that f of x can be because, because rationals and irrationals are dense, meaning there's an infinitesimally small distance between them. Uh, so we can just say that those are the only possible values that f of x can take on and the smallest possible value out of that will then just be zero. So if we put that back into our lower sum equation, um, you just plug in zero into a small mi, we get zero times xi minus xi minus one and that's just going to be zero because it's a summation of zero times something else. So now we have to compute the upper sum and it's going to be similar to the calculation of the lower sum except now we just have to find capital MI and with that's just going to be the highest possible value within the xi minus one to xi interval and since again rationals and irrationals are dense you will have to say that part in order to justify why there's only two possible values it's just going to be one we plug in one back into the capital MI and here what we can do is we can actually expand out the xi and xi minus one uh, summation to see what kind of pattern we get and we get xi minus x0 as the first term and then as the second term we get x2 minus x1 and we see that x1's cancel out and we can keep going let's say we take xn minus 1 and minus xn minus 2 
and then xn minus one minus xn minus one xn minus one terms cancel out everything cancels out except for xn minus x zero it's a telescopic sum and that's what you're going to get as the answer and xn is the last possible value of x while x zero is the first vol value of x and our interval that we're working with is from 0 to 3 so then xn is just gonna be equal to 3 and 0 is just gonna be x0 so that means the answer to this is just 3 minus 0 which is 3 now here's where picking the arbitrary partition allows us to make important conclusions so since we picked the arbitrary partition P uh, we can say that all all the lower sums are equal to zero and all the upper sums are equal to zero or three for all possible partitions p that means that the supremum of all the lower sums is going to be equal to zero so it's just a bunch of this the set of zeros and the infimum of all the upper sums is going to be equal to three because it's just a bunch of set of threes so clearly the supremum of the lower sums and the com the infimum of the upper sums are not equal since it's 3 does not equal 0 and by Darbo definition f is not integrable now I want to talk a little bit about the integrability reformation which is another way to prove if things are integrable or not and it states that uh, in order for something to be integrable uh, for all epsilon uh, greater than zero there exists a partition P such that the upper sum minus the lower sum is less than epsilon now this is pretty similar to your delta epsilon definition of a limit if you remember from uh, uh, calculus one and that just states that for all epsilon greater than zero there exists delta greater than zero such that the absolute value x minus c uh, being less than delta implies that f of x minus the limit is less than epsilon in this case there's no x minus c and the f of x is just the upper sum and the l is the lower sum and the delta is just the partition p so that could help you remember it if you uh, want the thing is though usually we want to prove that uh, functions are not integrable with this definition so what we have to do is we actually have to negate this definition and that means negating the uh, existential quantifiers and the equalities as well so the for all epsilon becomes there exists epsilon greater than zero the there exists partition p becomes for all partitions p and uh, such that you uh, the lower the upper sum minus the lower sum is what's the opposite of less than it's greater than or equal to epsilon so this is the definition we will be using to uh, prove that things are not integrable so since we have a there exists epsilon what we can do to prove these things we can just choose an epsilon and for all partitions means we will have to be choosing arbitrary partitions the general rule of thumb is if you see a for all you uh, let it be arbitrary and if you see a there exists you choose a specific value so to showcase IR let's uh, use the previous example again so let's write out the definition the definition of IR is that there exists epsilon greater than zero such that for all partitions P of the interval that we want to deal with zero to three um, the upper sum minus the lower sum is greater than or equal to epsilon so like we said before we want to choose an epsilon uh, we don't know what epsilon we want to choose yet so let's just leave that blank but we have to let P be an arbitrary partition of 0 to 3 so now all we have to do is we have to compute uh, the upper sum minus the lower sum but in order to do that we need to know our MI and our capital MI and we already did this before so I'll just write it down here um, I'll just write it down from this step where we find out that uh, small mi is the infimum of 0 to 1 and capital mi is supremum of 0 to 1 and you have to write that this is because irrationals and rationals are dense so the small mi is just 0 the capital mi is 1 and then we have to compute uh, the upper sum minus the lower sum that's just going to be the summation of i 
from 1 to n of capital MI times xi minus xi minus 1 and lower sum is going to be the same thing except with lower m the small MI and then we can group these together because they both sum they have the same lower limit of summation and upper limits of summation so you can use the uh, the addition or the subtraction rule of uh, summations and you can plug in the MI's and you end up getting 1 times xi minus xi minus 1 and we already know what xi minus xi minus 1 is from the previous example it's just xn minus x0 and that's just the length of the interval which is 3 and now all we have to do is we just have to pick an epsilon that's less than 3 or less than or equal to 3 so let's just pick 2 once you do this you're done the proof you just have to fill in the uh, epsilon uh, above and you're good to go before I wrap up the video, I'd just like to point out some differences between the Darbo definition and integrability reformation to decide whether things are integrable or not. So in the Darbo definition, we had to find the supremum of all the lower sums and the infimum of the, all the upper sums. And since we did this, we had to pick an arbitrary partition P. And we did this to show that all the sums are the same, and that's how we were able to find the supremum and the infimum. And we didn't have to do with do this uh, with uh, integrability reformation. Uh, we just had to pick any upper sum and lower sum and show that uh, they differed by some amount. We don't have to justify that much. We don't have to say, oh, we picked some arbitrary p and that's why this happens. We just have to say that the p is arbitrary at the beginning. And in Darbo, you're showing that the two sums are not equal to each other, whereas in integrability reformation, you're showing that they actually differ by some amount, in this case, epsilon.